This is Selma Schimmel from the group room and Vital Options International. Very happy to introduce you to our latest series featuring the lives of people who've had cancer, who are living with cancer. We call this Voice for Life. And we introduce this new series today with Karen Lee, a seven year young adult breast cancer survivor. Thank Hi, you Karen. For having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming to talk to us about your own story as we begin to feature the lives of the many people living with and through cancer. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. I'm a native Texan. I was diagnosed at age 36. It was kind of a shock, of course, most of the time it is. I always knew to kind of keep an eye out for it because both of my grandmothers um, had died of breast cancer and one was actually 40 when that happened. So I kind of had it in the back of my head to be proactive with self-examinations. I felt a lump and made an appointment right away to go see uh, my doctor. Uh, turns out she didn't think anything was wrong, but she sent me to uh, have a mammogram anyway, which as we know, turned out positive. I was uh, stage two, grade three, and um, HER2 knew positive as well, so that made the tumor a little more aggressive. And you did one other thing I think that was very important, understanding family history and also taking control and responsibility of your own body, that you did self-exam. My health insurance at the time wasn't going to do a mammogram until I turned 40, even though I've had some doctors that had told me to go have one, even when I turned 30 due to my grandmother's having it. If I hadn't done that and just waited on what the insurance people had said, there's a big possibility I wouldn't be sitting in front of you right now. I never got sad. I never got mad. Uh, I just said, it's the fight of your life. It's time to put on the gloves and fight through a lot of support with my family and my now husband. We got engaged the week I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed on a Monday. He proposed on that Friday. So I, after that, it was like, okay, what do we, what do we do? You know, are you, are you sure? And he popped the question. It seems rather intentionally at that point. He had already planned it. He had already asked my father. The date was already set. He's military, so he'd flown in in the jet and did it at the airport. It was great. I mean, it was. It did take my mind off it a, a lot, but two weeks later I'm in the hospital having a, a bilateral mastectomy. You know, then two weeks after that having, or getting married, having a true 200 person wedding, and then the week after that starting chemo. So my honeymoon fell on my, <laughs> on my chemo week. I'm trying to imagine what it must be like to be a young woman on her honeymoon immediately after having a double mastectomy. You feel like part, you know, part of your, your is gone, part of your womanhood is gone. It takes a lot of getting used to, but having the support of someone who understands it makes it easier. Did he understand what a breast cancer diagnosis meant? How did he, what was his dialogue with you coming home because had he learned only when he came home of your diagnosis? We didn't live in the same town at the same time at that time, but he came in for my my mammogram and surprised me. So that day we actually found out because they I didn't have to wait. They basically knew right away what it was. So they came out and told me right then. Did you have a reconstruction? I have had a reconstruction. Um, I started with the deep flap procedure, which was relatively new with the uh, doctor here in San Antonio, and um, still had to have implants due to some issues with my chest wall being concaved due to my tissue expander. So I've had quite a few different surgeries. And then you went through what kind of treatment? Pretty much the standard treatment, the um, adriomyc adriomycin cyto cytoxin. And then right when it was time to switch over to my second round is when Herceptin, I think that week or the week before the great numbers came out on that. So my doctor said, hey, we're going to switch this up a bit. We want you to do, uh, try Herceptin if you want to. These are the numbers with you being her too new. This is great. And, you know, now I'm just, I'm praising that there's no telling where I would be if Herceptin hadn't 
come out at that exact time. Amazing and yes. fantastic. <laughs> and then now, not only on top of everything else, now you had to lose your hair, and he and your husband had great one more <laughs> wake up call. Yes, I had very long, curly, thick hair, and I was always kind of known for my hair throughout childhood. We didn't live in the same place during all this. Basically, I went from a full head of hair to completely bald by the time he saw me again. Where are you now, it's seven years later, and what have you done with your cancer as a result of the experience? I've become an, what I call an advocate on what I can do. Was very involved with the Race for the Cure in Fort Worth. I walked that six times. I've walked Denver twice and I've done the three-day walk and have raised over $60,000. So I live in a little town right now where we're based that doesn't have any support groups. I'm kind of known as, I guess, the breast cancer lady of the little town. And so when people are diagnosed or have friends or family that are diagnosed, I usually get a phone call to see if I can help or direct them in some sort of way. If you could reach out to someone who is in their 30s just diagnosed, what do you want to tell them with your voice about life. Keep on keeping on. That is my mantra. The word hope is a big part of my vocabulary. I sign all of my letters with, with some sort of hope message. I even have a pink vintage trailer that's called Hope that I pull around to different events that try to spread awareness. Go forward, look for the future, keep a positive attitude. Your mental state is just as important as your physical state. If you give up, then your mind gives up, and then eventually your body will give up. Thank you. Karen Lee, a seven-year young adult breast cancer survivor who understands what it means to use her voice for life. Thank you.